Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lions Den with another news and commentary. I'm doing an update on the situation um, about a couple of days ago where a Lyft passenger was brutally beaten by Clayton County Sheriff's deputies. Now, there's been reports that this deputy who's been seen on video who beaten this brother has been fired. So I'm about to read this article. This comes from Atlanta Journal and Constitution. It says a Clayton County deputy seen repeatedly hitting a man in a non-viral vi arrest video has been fired for using excessive force, Sheriff Victor Hill announced Sunday. The deputy, whose name has not been released, was placed on administrative leave without pay. Friday evening, after cell phone footage of the encounter appeared to show him punching 26-year-old, uh, who was later identified as Roderick Walker, during a traffic stop. Video captured by at least two bystanders have been viewed thousands of times online since Friday afternoon. The footage shows two deputies on top of Walker as he lying on the ground. One of the deputies is seen repeatedly striking the man as the other attempts to place him in handcuffs. Now, um, this is a tweet from Sheriff Victor Hill, you know, saying um, this is what he said on his tweet that, you know, um, he's on internal investigation concerning excessive force on social media video. It, okay, it's unclear if the deputy who hit Walker faces charges, but Hill said a criminal investigation into the incident will be turned over to the Clayton County District Attorney's Office. Walker is black and two deputies who made the arrest are white. The incident comes after months of protests across the nation calling for the end to police violence and racial injustice. Okay, attorney Sheen Williams said Walker and his girlfriend was passengers in an SUV that was stopped by not having a tail li tail light. During the stop, deputy asked to see Walker's driver's license, even though he was not the one behind the wheel. Williams said, and I said our client was asked for his ID, and he responded that he did not have it and didn't need it since he was not driving. Williams told the Atlanta Journal Constitution. He inquired why he was being asked for his ID. That response obviously did not sit well with the officer. I'm going to stop you right there. You know, when I did this video, ladies and gentlemen, and I told you guys that the the Lyft passenger, you know, when a, when a, when a um, sheriff's deputy asked the Lyft passenger, which is Roger Walker, for his ID, and he and he um he first he said he didn't have it and then he said he didn't I mean basically he um he really didn't want it you know even if he did have the ID he don't he really don't want to give it to him because he's not the one driving and and, and that's and it's true and what what's what's the law by um by refusing the officer for even giving the ID because obviously unless you drive it unless you I mean, you the driver of that vehicle, then the then the sheriff's deputy don't have the right to even ask you for no damn ID. That's my opinion, and this goes on. Um, so that's that's red flag right there. Another red flag is that if it's a tail light, why didn't you talk to the Lyft driver about it? This ain't got nothing to do with the passenger of that of of the Lyft driver, and if I mean, and if you have any problems with it, go to Lyft about this. But then it's it's like doing what's right. So let's keep it moving with this article. Okay, it says William said the deputy demanded that his client get out of the vehicle and attempted to arrest him. That's when bystanders began recording the encounter. And this is this is this guy named Javis from Instagram. You know, I guess he was one of the people that, you know, did the video or one of the bystanders that record the entire situation on, the, on another um, another handle, you know. So let's keep it moving. Now, it says during the arrest, witnesses can be heard telling the deputies to get off Walker, who said he can't breathe. The, there were and get this guys there were two children inside the stop SUV and they can be heard crying in the background so in other words ladies and gentlemen they got two kids witnessed the entire thing and they were scared and they was crying picture yourself if you get stopped 
by a police officer or a sheriff's deputies, and you really didn't do anything wrong, but you got kids in the back. You right? I'm kids in the back of the seat. I'm back. Um, um, back of the car, watching the entire thing. Isn't it basically it's really ridiculous of how it went down? But I'm gonna, but, but this gets worse when I'm re continue reading this article. So let's go ahead and continue. It says our client ends up being beaten in the, in his face and throughout his body to the point he goes unconscious. William said, all because of an alleged traffic violation. Which, by the way, he um did you, really this not his fault. He ain't got nothing to do with it. But keep it moving. Walker can be seen bleeding from his face by the time he is led away in handcuffs. The former deputy seen throwing punches in the video told witnesses the man bit his hand, which that was a damn lie because there's another bystander who said that he saw the entire thing and he didn't bit him not one time. Williams said the violent encounter shows the unfortunate truth of what can happen when black Americans interact with law enforcement and call for criminal charges against both deputies involved. Representing people of color, I often see where officers are escalating violence with actions disproportionate to the circumstances, he said. There's no reason that a traffic violation should end up with someone being beaten in the manner that Mr. Walker was beaten. On Saturday evening, Walker's attorney and family held a news conference outside of Clayton County Jail, where the 26-year-old remains held on two, get this, guys, where the 26-year-old remains held on two counts of battery and two counts of obstructing or hindering law enforcement officers' jail records show. So, ladies and gentlemen, they refuse to even let this man out because of, of his, quote-unquote, of, of his um criminal past or of his um, ongoing, um, let's see, I'm going charged with another county. Let's just put it like that. But what does this have to do with him being beaten up by a sheriff's deputy? You know, what does his criminal past, what does his other charge have anything to do with it? And it, it's not even his fault. He was in the lift passenger. And, and, the, and the broken taillight wasn't even his fault either because he wasn't even the one driving. So you see, they always making excuses. They always try to justify of why this brother getting beat up. And they really refused him to, to let him out of jail. Of course, he had a uh, got a, because he had charges of 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 um uh, another crime in another county. This, ladies and gentlemen, is straight up ridiculous. So in other words, they're gonna keep him in jail from other from charges from another county that quote unquote allegedly he did, and yet. You basically justified by beating him up, by pulling him out of the car because he refused to even give you his ID, which he said he didn't have either. And of course, they should have basically if if the drivers, if a person who has a driver's license that drives Lyft, why in the hell they allow him to drive in the first place? And and why will Lyft and why did Lyft seek action for that driver that didn't have a driver's license? You can't operate a vehicle without a license that's that's common damn sense and and on top of that he works for Lyft and you telling me that he didn't have a license on him but yet you're going to attack a passenger which he had nothing to do with he had anything to do with the situation you beat him up and now he they refuse to even let him out of jail because he has he, I mean, he allegedly did something in another county Okay, whatever. Let's keep it. Let's keep continuing with this article. It says the family called Walker's immediate release, as well as thoroughly investigation into the incident by an outside outside agency. In a news release, Hill said he ordered a signature bond for Walker on Friday so he can be released from from the jail. That request it was outrageous. That request was denied because Walker had has a felony probation warrant out on Fulton County charging him with cruelty to children, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and failure to appear to failure to appear in court, the sheriff said. What does this have to do with what happened to that day? See, this is what pisses me off. So in other words, because he has a, a felony of a crime he did in another county, allegedly they have a right to even keep him in jail for that. After he's been stopped by a, a, a lift, I mean, he's been stopped by a sheriff's deputy 
because of a Lyft driver, which he has no driver's license. I'm talking about a Lyft dri the guy that's supposed to drive around, who he did not even have uh, a, dr um, a driver's license. And yet you want to stop this brother because he has a felony in another county and has an arrest warrant in another county. But what does this have to do with the situation that he got beat up by um, by the sheriff's deputies? You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is getting really, really crazy of how law enforcement, how they treat black. This is how they treat black men in this country, y'all. Treating black men and black women in this country. And they try to justify. This is this is why I said that, you know, they're going to use their excuse or why they did what they did. They try to justify of all of this because he had a felony warrant, allegedly had a fel felony warrant in a different county of a crime he did in another county, which, ladies and gentlemen, didn't have anything to do with him getting beat up by the Clayton County Sheriff's deputies. They didn't got, he didn't got anything to do with this. Some of this, some of this ain't even his fault. It had nothing to do with it. But they're going to make an example of it because he got a alleged criminal felony in another county? Okay. Mr. Walker's legal counsel will have to resolve this, these issues to secure his release, Hill said. Adding Walker received medical treatment at the jail and, his, and that x-ray showed no sign of broken bones. Williams said his client was not arrested for being on probation or having an open carry in another county. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to stop you right there. Even if he did have a gun, right? Georgia is an open carry state. But yet, okay, but when it comes to black men or black women that have carrying guns, oh, you want to make an example of it? Oh, he, he, he's a criminal, right? He has a gun on. Oh, this is ridiculous, y'all. This is, this is another example of why law enforcement and police officers can justify stuff they did. And, and, and basically say, well, he had a criminal record of another county. What does this have to do with him getting beat up and punched and kicked by a Clayton County Sheriff's deputy? This has had nothing to do with this. But they make it say, well, he had a criminal. Well, we, we got, oh, he's alleged to have an arrest warrant on another county, which is really ridiculous. And obviously, this is just, I mean, this, is, uh, this, this situation, ladies and gentlemen, is just ridiculous, in my opinion. It really is. So let me continue this. It says, um, okay, he says that uh, William said his client was not arrested for being on probation or having an open case in another county and calls Hill's statement just a weak attempt to deflect from his lack of leadership and continues encouragement that his deputies violate people's civil rights. Carrying signs, a group of protesters returned to Clayton County Jail on Sunday afternoon, demanding Walker's release and calling for an end to police violence against black people. Vince Champion, Southeast Regional Director from the International Brotherhood of Police Officers, said some departments have been quick to terminate officers. Here we go again. I mean, and he sounds like he's one of the police unions, but he's going to defend what this officer is doing, in other words. So let's continue. He said some departments have been quick to terminate officers in the wake of recent protests across this country. They seem get I'm, I'm just reading this bullshit, but I'm going ahead and continue. They seem to not be willing to let the investigation go all the way through before they actually take and any type of action said champion who organization does not represent the Clayton County Sheriff's Office. So. In other words, this officer wanted to defend the actions of what this um, sheriff's deputy did. In other words, it's just like a police union saying, well, well, I don't even know why they want to terminate him. Um, he basically didn't do nothing wrong. They tried to, this is why I say these police unions, they need to be shut down. They need to be stopped because the video doesn't lie. And they, they try to cover it up and say, well, I don't understand why the police officer is going to be terminated for his crimes. This, uh, this, this, this shit, I mean, this deputy should have been arrested and charged. You know, that is assault. And nearly almost, he almost killed the man. And he, yeah, yeah he want to defend his actions. Whatever. He added, there are some videos that are more detailed than others. However, and that is possible the sheriff saw some on the cell phone footage that Hill believed warranted the deputy's termination within two days of launching an internal investigation. The AJC reached out to the sheriff's office for comment over the weekend, but 
has not received a response. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the AJC's article. See, ladies and gentlemen, they are trying to justify what they did to Roger Walker. They try to justify and say, well, he, he has a warrant in another county and and basically uh, and he had he was failed to show in court. And he, he, he had a possession of a weapon, which, by the way, that in the state of Georgia, uh, it, the Georgia, state of Georgia has an open carry state. So that's another excuse. And then and see, they try to make excuses for why this um, sheriff's deputy did what he did. And first of all. They they stop they stop this they stop this SUV which of course um, was from who's a Lyft driver with a broken tail light right so they stopped this SUV okay a red flag is and this is how I feel about this y'all you know if you're a lap, uh, if you're a Lyft driver why would you drive without a license you know and and if and the sheriff's definitely having a problem with that. Don't go after Roger Walker. Go after to, 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 go after the Lyft driver because he doesn't have a license. And then go after to his employee employer, which is Lyft, because he doesn't have a driver's license. And let Lyft deal with that. But no, they didn't do that in this case. That's red flag number one. Red flag number two is when Roger Walk when the sheriff's deputies asked Roger Walker for his ID. You know, he said he didn't he uh he didn't have it, and even if he did have it, he would not give it to the sheriff's deputy. And rightfully so, because he didn't he, he this is not his vehicle. He he's not worked for Lyft, so this is not his vehicle. So then he the sheriff's deputy got mad about that, pulled his brother out, beat the living daylights out of him, which you see he left unconscious, nearly killed the brother. And yet, all of a sudden, they're gonna justify and say, "Well, you know, he has a, a, a allegedly has a, a arrest warrant in another county for beating up kids, for messing with kids, and had a weapon, had a, a, a possession of a weapon, which, of course, this is an open carry state, so anybody can have a gun or any weapon, of some kind." But yet, they're using this to justify what what the sheriff deputy did to him, and so. And then, and then on top of that, a third red flag was they refused to even let this man out of out of jail for, of course, a, a, a unrelated charge that happened in another county. So, the, so ladies and gentlemen, they are justifying this, saying, "Well, you know, he did did something in another county, and what does this have to do with him getting beat up by these, the sheriff's deputies?" Now, they say that they fired the sheriff's deputy because of this video. But ladies and gentlemen, what if that what if what if the bystander didn't even record that video? That sheriff's deputy would have been do what he does best, let him go, it act like nothing happened. And see, there's two bystanders, and then and then the sheriff's deputy, well, he bit me. Well, one of the bystanders saw the entire thing say that. Well, why, I mean, he didn't even bit you, officer. I mean, I mean officer. So that's lying right there. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, they try so hard. The Clayton County Sheriff's deputies or sheriffs are trying so hard to cover this up to make it look like he's the criminal because he had an alleged arrest warrant in another county, which basically didn't have anything to do with it. And he didn't even go after the Lyft driver for not having a driver's license and let Lyft, the company of Lyft deal with that driver. And may maybe probably may terminate his terminate his employee employee as Lyft because he didn't have a driver's license and he didn't what he's supposed to do. But attacking this brother because he have a criminal past is wrong and, and unacceptable. And even though the sheriff's deputy who did this has been fired from Clayton County Sheriff's Office, they still need to be present charges of assault because that is an assault. But knowing them. They ain't going to do a damn thing because he's an officer. And that's how police get away with this crap. So he's going to end up, after this is going to blow over, This is he's going to end up with another precinct, you know, ain't going to hurt. And then the union going to fight for him because, well, he did got a criminal charge in another county. So they're going to fight for this to get his job at another precinct. And this is how police officers thinking, especially if he's in the union. And a police union is going to fight for him but ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. I mean, this ridic this is so ridiculous. 
and they're making excuses because he have a an arrest warrant or has a felony in another county, they have a right to say, well, this is justification because he, he did have a gun in another county or he did do something with, with children in another, another county. And guess what? When he, get, when he got beat up by Clayton County Sheriff's deputies, he did it in front of children, his kids. There's two kids in the, in the SUV. And you scared them and, and you did, I mean, you, I mean, you, they're going to they go have a traumatic experience for the rest of their lives after this incident right here. So y'all let, so let me know what you think about this. Like, click, subscribe, and remember to click the notification bell for all the news and commentary. With that being said, this is Lions Den signing off. Deuces.